Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. My name is Amna Ibrahim, and I'll be your guide today in getting started with VHDL programming and writing test benches with the help of GHDL and GTK Wave. This video is the second part of a mini series that aims to set you up and assist you in using GHDL and GTK Wave. The main aim of these videos and mini series is not to give an exhaustive or comprehensive explanation on how to write VHDL code or test benches, but rather give you a brief example on how you can use GHDL and GTK Wave in learning how to write VHDL code. The main aim of this video will be focusing on how you can write your own test bench and visualize the simulation results with the help of GTK Wave. As we've briefly discussed in our previous video, VHDL or Very High Speed Integrated Circuit Hardware Description Language is a powerful tool for designing and implementing digital circuits. However, to ensure that your VHDL code is working as intended, it's really important to create thorough test benches. And a test bench is essentially VHDL code that is used to simulate and test your design. It provides a controlled environment where you can feed input values and observe the outputs and verify that your design is functioning correctly. In this video, we will explore the key components of a VHDL test bench. We will write one and we will take an example of the output of a simulated test bench. And in this video, we will be writing a test bench for the AND gate that we've designed using VHDL code in our previous video. As you can see from the image, we will be subjecting some stimulus with the help of this test bench to the inputs of the design or unit under test, and then we will check the outputs. So let's go ahead and take a look at the structure of a test bench. Remember that we're trying to write a test bench code that tests the design of an AND gate that we've designed in our previous video. This means that we would need to subject our design or unit under test to multiple test cases of different inputs and based on those inputs we will get the output. And we need to check for the output and make sure that it matches that of the truth table that you see in front of you. The structure of the test bench is somewhat similar to that of your VHDL code, as you would need to, first of all, specify your VHDL library and the packages that you will use from that library. In our case, we will use the IEEE library and the STD Logic 1164 package from that library. And then we would need to create a VHDL component for our test bench, which contains an entity architecture pair, as we did for our AND gate in our last video. So let's go ahead and jump to the code, take a look at what we will be writing in it, and then take a look at the simulation of that test bench after we run it with the help of GTK Wave. So first things first, as we've done in our VHDL code, we will need to specify the libraries and packages that we will be using, and they are exactly the same as what we have used in our VHDL code. So we will use the IEEE library and the package stdlogic1164. The second thing we would need to do is that we would need to create an entity architecture pair for our VHDL component, which is the test bench. So we have went ahead and created an empty entity and we haven't specified any port signals or let's say uh, interfaces to the outside world and this is because the test bench doesn't connect to any external signals because the test bench itself is the one who will provide the signals for the design or unit under test then we will go ahead and create the architecture of the v vhdl component of the test bench 
And here we've called the, the, the entity of the test bench and gate test bench, so you can call it whatever you would like. Some people would call it test bench, but I went ahead and specified that this test, test bench is for the AND gate. So then we will need to create the architecture of this test bench, which is essentially where we will define the unit under test. We will need to instantiate that unit under test, and we would need to define how we will be testing the functionality of that unit under test. So since we're trying to test the functionality of the AND gate that we have created using the VHDL code, we would need to instantiate that component that we have created in our add VHDL code. So we will take this whole port that we've created in the entity and first of all, specify that the component is the AND gate and then the ports itself will be the same as the ones that we've specified over here. And then we will, we will end that component. So this is the component instantiation. The second thing we would need to do is we would need to define signals in which we would be applying that external uh, test cases to our unit under test. So we went ahead and created a signal for the input, a signal for the second input, and a signal for the output. And we've defined the data type. After instantiating the AND gate and after creating signals to route uh, onto the inputs and outputs of the AND gate where we will be producing or uh, exerting external stimulus from them onto our unit under test, we will first go ahead and map these signals where we will be introducing different signal levels from with the different ports of the unit under test. So this is what we are doing. We are essentially routing the AND gate ports with different probes that we that that we've created over here where from these different probes we will either observe the output or apply different inputs onto our unit under test. So we went ahead and mapped the first input of the AND gate, which is input 1, as we've defined it in our VHDL code, with the first probe that we will be exerting or applying a signal from. Similarly, we will be also routing the second input of the AND gate with the second probe that we will be, through this test bench, applying a signal to test the functionality of the AND gate. And we've also cre uh, uh, created a signal that will act as a probe, and we will connect that to the AND result port of the AND gate that we've created in our VHDL code. So this is essentially what this is doing over here. Now, VHDL code, unlike uh, code that you would see uh, used in software develop development, does not run sequentially, but rather runs uh, in parallel. So all these commands would run in parallel. Therefore, if we wanted to test different cases sequentially, we would need to use a different coding mechanism in VHDL. And this is essentially what process does. It assists us to execute code sequentially in a programming language known that is known for its parallelism. And just to clarify, what I mean is VHDL goes ahead and executes these two commands in parallel, concurrently. But a process allows us to execute each command from the top to the bottom sequentially. So we go ahead and start with this test case and we wait for one nanosecond. Then we go ahead and execute the second test case. Then we wait for another one nanosecond. And this, and this goes on until the end of the process. Okay, so as we've observed from the truth table, we have two inputs, right? So we have a possible combination of four test cases where the input can be either 0 and 0, or 0 or 1, 1 or 0, and 1, 1. But we went ahead and also defined a input, inputs of unknown variables. And x in VHDL means unknown. And at the end, we've, we've created whether or not we've created for ourselves a way or a mechanism that shows us whether or not we have completed the whole process. So to, as an indicator for us, 
we will get this printout in the command line if the test bench has been fully executed. Now that we've created the test bench, let's go ahead and save this as add underscore tb. And I've went ahead and saved it into the same project directory that we've created in our last video alongside the add.vhdl file. Now let's open up the command line again. And let's observe the directory through the dir command. And we can see that in addition to our last vhdl code that we wrote, the test bench is also available. We first need to compile both files and analyze them through the dash a command. And this is done through writing ghdl dash a. And let's analyze the and dot vhdl. And since we don't get any errors, this means that there is nothing wrong with our code. And then we have the add underscore test bench, test bench which is tb dot vhdl. And let's run this again. And what we have done here is we've compiled both files and we use the dash a, which is the analysis of the design file in vhdl terms and this creates a object within our folder and this is the work dash object 93.cf so since we've analyzed both codes what we will do is we will need to elaborate and build up the test bench so we, now that we've compiled both files using the analysis command let's go ahead and elaborate and build our design which is our test bench design to do so, we will need to write ghdl e and then the name of the test bench. And we don't need to specify the file and just run it. And if nothing happens, nothing occurs, this means that this has been successful. Now let's go ahead and run the file, run the built design, and launch the simulation. We can do that through the dash r command, which means running, and we will run the test bench. And what we can see is that we got what we have put as a message here, as executed test bench. This means that we have successfully run our simulation of the built test bench. However, what if we wanted to use GTK Wave to observe the timing diagram of the different test cases and the output. We can do that using the help of GHDL's uh, functionality of converting it into a VCD file, which is the VC which is the extension that the GTK Wave can read from, or the file format that the GTK Wave can open. To, the, to do that, we would also need to run the, run the simulation through GHDL-R, and most specifically, we would need to run the test bench. But this time, we need to specify that we want to create a VCD dump, which is the file format that GTK Wave is able to read. And that is equal to add.vcd. So where would that be? It would reside into the add.vcd folder. And when we run that, we can see that the simulation has been run again, hence the executed test bench message. And when we go ahead and open our uh, project directory, we can see that the VCD folder has been created. Created our VCD dump file. Let's go ahead and open up the command line again. And through the command gtk wave add.vcd, we will open up the VCD file. Go over here and look at the gate and double click it. Then you will see all the signals that we have. Uh, connected to the test bench and we will go ahead and drag the inputs first and then drag the output of the AND gate and as you can see we are in the fim2 seconds scale however as we've written our code in the nanosecond scale where the test cases are separated or are exerted for every one nanosecond, we will go ahead and zoom out. You can do so through control, pressing control and using your cursor. And we can see that for different inputs, so I've went ahead and clicked on the first phase, which is one nanosecond long. If we specified in our first test case, both inputs are unknown. And so we can see that the signals are unknown and the output is unknown. And for the second test case, when both inputs are zero, the output is zero, and 
for the third test case when input 1 is 0 and input 2 is 1, we get the output of 0. Similarly, for when input 1 is 1 and input 2 is 0, we get the output of the AND gate as 0. And for the final test case, when both inputs are high, the AND result is high as well, which is 1. We can see that this is what we expect the AND gate to behave as, meaning that our design has successfully implemented an AND gate. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you found this mini series useful in getting to know and getting started with the with using GHDL and GTK Wave for VHDL programming. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do so through subscribing or through Patreon. The link is in the description below.